Our title today is How to Serve the Word of God. And with this, we will begin our December 21st, 2022 Wednesday night service sermon. Our scripture reading today tells us both the curse and blessing received during the process of moving the Ark of God. The curse was upon Usa as he was killed for touching the Ark of God. And the blessing came upon the house of Obed Edom, where for three months Obed Edom kept the Ark of God, the Ark of the Covenant. So because of the Ark of God, one person was cursed because of it, and the other person blessed. So inside the Ark of the Covenant, the Ark of God, there was one important item encased within it, and they were the two stone tablets which had written on them the Ten Commandments. So Utsa was killed for daring to infringe upon the law of God. But Obed-Edom was blessed for keeping the ark inside his home, even after this deadly event. So we see the ark was the embodiment of God's word, and their actions, Utsa and Obed-Edom, signify those in the end who do not live according to the word and those who live in obedience to the word. We can see that Utsa did not live according to the word, but Obed-Edom lived in obedience to the word. So first, at this time, through the events that took place during the moving of the ark, let us learn together the proper way in which we can serve and obey the word of God. We see this incidence in number one, Hophni and Phineas disregarded the ark and died. Eli, who was a judge and a priest, had these two sons, Hophni and Phineas, and 1 Samuel 2.12 refers to them as wicked men who did not no God. Eli's two sons were certainly ordained as priests, as Eli was also a priest. So how is it that Eli's two sons did not know God? Here, the word to know in Hebrew is yada. It doesn't just mean to know something, but it is to understand. It means to lie together. In other words, they knew of God, but they did not know him experientially. They only knew God superficially, and this was the problem with Eli's two sons. They did not experience who God truly was. And so because of this, they disregarded God, even God's offerings, and they ate God's offerings first. And at the door of the holy tabernacle, they even committed the perverse sin of sleeping with the woman there. So in the end, what did God do to Hophni and Phinehas? Hophni and Phinehas, they went out to war, even though they were priests, and they died by the hand of their enemies. So Hophni and Phinehas, they were not supposed to go out to war because by custom, the priests did not go to war. 
So after God decided to destroy them, what was the manner of their destruction? They had no choice, but they had to go to war. And this is found in 1 Samuel chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. It says, When the people came into the camp, the elders of Israel said, Why has the Lord defeated us today before the Philistines? Let us take to ourselves from Shiloh the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, that it may come among us and deliver us from the power of our enemies. So the people sent to Shiloh, and from there they carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of Hosts, who sits above the cherubim, and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were there with the Ark of the Covenant of God. So they, through the elders, decided to take the Ark of the Covenant to the war, and Hophni and Phinehas had no choice but to follow along with the Ark. So they took the Ark to the battlefield, and the Israelites lost the Ark to the Philistines. And Hophni and Phinehas, who were guarding the Ark, died. This is something that should have never happened to the priests of Israel, but this happened in order that Hophni and Phinehas would die in this manner. This would have never happened in ordinary circumstances. So what does this tell us? It tells us that Hophni and Phinehas, although they were to live according to the law of God, they were those who completely disregarded it. And today, this happens with saints as well. Outwardly, they seem like they stand by the word, but in actuality, they are evildoers who do not obey God's word. They do not even want to worship, but they call themselves Christians. And outside, they may hold on to the Bible, but inside, they have no interest for the word of God. And how does God react to these type of people? God forcibly draws that person to a place of destruction, saving the righteous from danger and placing the evildoer in that place of danger instead. Proverbs 21:18. The wicked is a ransom for the righteous, and the treacherous is in the place of the upright. And Isaiah 43, verse 3 says, For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I have given Egypt as your ransom, Cush and Seba, in your place. At this time, I believe you and I, who are here tonight, even though we are tired, we have fought our weary bodies. And we are the true righteous people who have been brought out of the place of destruction. Please believe in this. Revelation 17.14 tells us the following. The Lamb will overcome them because he is Lord of lords and King of kings and those who are with him are the called and chosen and faithful. So in the last days, the saints who are victorious they are those who are called by our Lord. And why? Because we are called as the chosen and faithful. And the evildoers are placed in the place of danger. And we are taken out and saved. And number two. Usa was killed 
while touching the ark through his mistaken thoughts. The ark, which was captured and taken to Philistine territory, caused great calamity, so it was eventually taken back to kiriath Jerim in the land of Israel, and it remained in the house of Ibanidab for 20 years. So how blessed should this house have been for keeping the Ark of the Covenant for 20 years. If we think about this, we would think they must have received so much blessing. But then it was moved to the city of David. And the incident of Perez Usa occurred in which God lashed out against Usa, who was a part of Abinadab's household. And this is found in 2 Samuel 6, verses 6 through 8. Here, why was Usa killed? The Bible tells us there are two reasons why. The first reason was because the ark was to be carried on the shoulders of the Kohathites, not in a cart. And the second reason was because Usa touched the sacred ark with his hands. Numbers 4.15 It tells us of the law of how to move the ark of God, the ark of the covenant. And when Aaron and his sons have finished covering the holy objects and all the furnishings of the sanctuary, when the camp is set to set out, is to set out. After that, the sons of Koath shall come to carry them so that they may not touch the holy objects and die. These are the things in the tent of meeting which the sons of Koath are to carry. So it says twice that the sons of Koath are to carry them and they cannot touch it or else they will die. So what does this verse regarding Usa teach us today? It is those who seek to serve God's word with their own thoughts and their own righteousness do so with self-zeal and will immediately clash with God. So Usa He was destroyed in a different way than Hophni and Phineas. He was destroyed thinking he was doing the right thing for God, but he went completely against God's will. So because of Usa's mistaken thought, he committed this great sin. We must not live ignoring the word, nor can we interpret and imply the word as we please. So the new cart that carried the ark, led by Utsa, is showed Utsa's self-zeal to take care of the ark of God. But instead, he was trying to fulfill his own self-righteousness, not God's righteousness. So today, saints claim to live by the word, but they do not enjoy the blessings promised by the word. And this is why. We say, I worked, I worked hard to prepare a new cart, a new way to serve the word. But in the end, that new way is not what God wanted. Romans 10, 2 through 3 tells us what we must know. 
For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not in accordance with knowledge. For not knowing about God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own, they did not subject, subject themselves to the righteousness of God. In doing God's work, the method and purpose, it must also be right. No matter how much God wants us to do something, if we do not do it God's way, then we cannot accomplish it the way God wants. Then we cannot fulfill His purpose. Going up to the city of David with the Ark of God, clearly this is what God wanted. This was His will. But then why did Usa, who was helping the ark, why did he die? Because it wasn't done the way God wanted it to be done. So God stopped this. And in this incident, he made them think about what they were doing wrong. From now on, we must live a life of faith that pleases God and we must be satisfied in doing it God's way and not live a life of faith that only pleases and satisfies ourselves, but work according to the work that God has covenanted with us. I bless this upon you in the name of the Lord. And lastly, number three. Lastly, number three. What is the proper way in which we can serve the word of God? Number three. We learn by Obed Edom took care of the Ark of God so that the blessing poured down from generation to generation. Number three, Obed Edom took care of the Ark of God so that the blessing poured down from generation to generation. After the incident of Perez Usa, the Ark of God was taken to the house of Obed Edom where it remained for three months. And he received tremendous blessings, both in the home and in his possessions. And King David heard of this. So if King David heard this, the whole nation heard about this. And do you know what Obed Edom means? It means to serve. True to the meaning of his name, Obed Edom served the Ark of God with all his heart and with great fear and trembling and humility. And as a result, he received blessings for generations to come. Why? Because he wanted to act according to God's will and in reverence he followed the method in which God wanted him to follow for God's righteousness, for God's seal, and for God's glory. And as this blessing of Obed Edom was made known to King David, King David, he had hope once again for the ark to come to him. And he repented of his past mistake in mishandling the ark. And David joyfully carried the ark of God up to the city of David after he repented. And according to the word, he made the ark become carried instead of riding in a cart. So it was Obed Edom who showed David through his humility and blessings to repent. So in the same way, we must be people of light, influencing and converting many around us by becoming spiritual Obed Edoms who serve the word of God righteously. And to do this, we need to take a closer look at the blessings that Obed Edom received. So what were the blessings that 
Obed Adam, receive from God. Why should we know this? Because we need to receive these blessings as well. First, Obed Adam was blessed in his whole house and possessions. Just this alone is such a great reward. But further than this, the sons of Obed Adam received the marvelous blessing of occupying as many as 14 of the 24 gatekeeper positions that David had instituted. So 14 of his descendants were the gatekeepers amongst 24. So what does this show us? That if you truly obey God's word, not only will you be blessed, but also your offspring, everything that belongs to you will be blessed as well, if you obey well. First Chronicles 26 verse 8 tells us the blessing that that were to befall Obed-Edom. All these were of the sons of Obed-Edom. They and their sons and their relatives were able men with strength for the service, 62 from Obed-Edom. So Obed-Edom his sons, his relatives even, all of them were strong enough for the service of God. So not only our possessions, blessings, but also strength in our family members. Please believe we will receive this. So receiving an inheritance from your parents, is that the only blessing to receive? No but strength in your family members, power, status. They received all of this, the relatives as well. They were all people of great ability who were used greatly for God. So the greatest blessing is receiving power from God and doing God's work powerfully. Please believe in this. Believing this truth without doubting, may you receive the blessings of Obed Edom, and may you become people of power, people of great position, and not only you, but your relatives and descendants after you. I bless this upon you in the name of the Lord. So the people we have learned of tonight represents the three different kinds of people who worship God today. So there are people like Hophni and Phineas who are supposed to live according to God's law. But instead of living according to God's law, they live disregarding God's word and receive God's wrath. The Bible, the word, they don't even regard it as important. So they are destroyed. And there are people like Usa, the unfortunate people. They interpret and believe in God's word their own way, thinking they are doing God's will. But this is wrong as well. And in the end, they also receive God's wrath. And lastly, there are people like Obed Edom. They are people who obey God's words and live and receive blessings that not only come down to them, but also run down to their relatives and offspring. So of these three types of people, who do you want to be like? Obed Edom. Now there are exactly 10 days that could be counted on our fingers left in the year of 2022. So no matter how heavy the weight of the words of the cross lies on our shoulders, 
may we continue to live a life of obedience. And may we be like Obed Edom, who obeys the word with humility. And may blessings be poured upon your heads and the heads of your offspring and relatives. I bless this upon you in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Dear loving Father God, we believe you have given this year of 2022 as a gift to us. And in these 10 remaining days, may we once again remember your word and learn exactly how to follow your word according to your will. And we thank you for teaching us tonight in this world the greatest blessing, the greatest gift we can receive is your word and being able to obey it. And may we not only read the word and listen to the word, but with this word, may we truly be able to follow it according to your ways. May we worry about this, show great interest in this so that as we live, we can live with the blessings like Obed Edom. And not only this, but our relatives, our offspring, may they become powerful, overcome the wickedness of this world, and may they be able to do your works and receive the same blessings as Obed Edom. We believe this will happen, and we pray in the loving name of our Lord, Jesus Christ, with thanksgiving. Amen. Let us give glory to God.